So how many people believe in this statement? Collaboration is the new form of currency, yes or yes? Yes. 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 Absolutely it is. And so what we want to do today is I'm going to take time away from what I want to do and give time to you so you can do what you want to do. And we're going to go around this room and I'm going to give everybody just a minute. Right? You ever heard of an elevated pitch? Yeah. Guess what? This elevator got a half a floor, so you only get a minute. <laughs> right? You get one minute. So that way you get an opportunity to share with the people in the room what you do and who you are. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. All right. Good deal. So we're going to start over here in the corner with this young lady, and she's going to introduce herself. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, afternoon, my name is Michelle Lennard. I'm the legal student representative, and what we do is we give people equal access to the legal justice system because at some point, everyone will need a lawyer, need to know their rights, and let me know how I can help you. Good deal. All right. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, you're not? You just hold the space? You just use the AC. Okay, we got it. All right. Man, you over in the corner. Yes, stand up. We got to be able to see you. Um, I also do like coaching, mentorship, training, and um, finding budgeting, and um, <laughs> all right, good deal. I told you, you should have been warming up. I've been talking to you since I got here. I told you, you get up and start talking to people, but now it's all on you. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Danielle Jackman, and I'm a Awesome, awesome. All right, go keep this party going right back that way. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerome Arrington, and I am a business please, and life coach, please. and I am here to help anyone who wants to find their direction and their path to go forward. Good deal, good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to come back to the center. Let's stay over there. Hello, I am Monique Knight. I'm with Comprehensive Family Care. Okay. I'm also a business and life coach, and I'm here to help And we know who that lady is in the corner. We know who she is. All right. We're going we're gonna to come right back here. Oh, it's me. Oh. Yeah, it's on you. You're on the hot seat. No. Hello, everyone. My name is Charlisa. I represent Business Um, We are a business support company, primarily working with small businesses to, um, to help them grow. Awesome. All right. All right. LLC, right? LLC. Good Absolutely. Deal. All right. And I'm not going to forget about this. Hold on. Hold on. Also, two people who have not set up their businesses and who need that support. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you go. Fair enough. All right. Right behind you. This guy right here in the white coat. You got to respect the white coat whenever you see him. She got some length on it, too. All right. So, fun fact you learned something new today. Did you know that the length of the doctor's coat shows their tenure? So, the longer the jacket, right, the more credentials they got. I picked that up and that out in the hospital. So she got on the long jacket. She knows some stuff. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Yolanda White. I am a business and life training, but I'm also here to promote my special needs and environmental health services. You know, we're really honest with ourselves. I think all of us have a special need somewhere. But if it affects your ability to function, um, then please come in and reach out to me and we'll go through our special needs consultation. And then I also help to protect people from the pollution problem. Yeah, we don't talk about it much in the uh, news and all that, but uh, we have a big pollution problem, the air, the water, the food, all that. But I'm going to help you to reduce your toxin burden to improve your health. And so just reach out to me and come get your humidity meter. All right, and come get your water. <laughs> so I'm going to help you get healthy. Thank you. Good deal. Right. We have some people in the middle that were from the outdoor. And, and I absolutely, and I'm, I'm coming in. I was just about to ask um, any vendors in this center section right here. All right, so let's find one of them. Let's focus in on them. Go ahead, ma'am. Tell us about your business. Hi, my name is Kadesh, and I'm with Fire and Water Metaphysical Wellness in Lawrenceville, Georgia. We are a crystal shop, CBD store, metaphysical wellness is what we do. So we help people tap in and tune in with themselves 
I am a mental health priestess, meaning I use metaphysical tools to help people with their mental health. So we do readings, I do energy work. We rent our space for so people who also offer services. You can come and rent the space. We offer events for the community. We're in Lawrenceville, and we have a booth outside, and we're giving out free hugs. <laughs> so we're giving free hugs out today, so come by the booth and get a hug, which is why I won't be able to stay long, because we're also wasting with your waste needs, which helps you set your intention, and the person at the booth can't do that. So I'm, I'm going to send them in here to listen to this, but I wanted to say hi to everyone, and we're over in the outside. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we got another one right here, white shirt. Go ahead, sir, tell us about yourself. Yes. My name is Yao Morris. I'm the founder of Grand Trine. I'm also operating a business, Trine Towers. We have the office right next to Melissa, and we're renting out office space for those of you interested and in other administrative services there. Good deal. Now, did I miss anyone? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, I missed, missed him? All right, go ahead. Go for it. No, because I'm sure if you miss me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize about that. Let me be short and brief. My name is Ron Bertab. I'm an insurance real estate from New York. I've been with Legal Shield for 25 years. My goal is to empower, educate, enlighten, and enrich people to have access to the legal justice system. Because with legal justice system is not black and white, it's green. I have my Michelle, one of my directors, but it's easy to be rich and guilty than innocent and poor. But yet, eight out of ten Americans don't have a will. Eight out of ten African Americans don't have a will. So I give you a will, a living will, and a power of attorney for less than a cup of coffee and less than a bottle of water. Identity theft is the number one white kind of crime. Come see us. We are willing to share. But it's important and imperative that you understand that the legal environment is changing rapidly. And I appreciate everybody. Melissa, we appreciate you too. I just came from a naughty event. But this is great. The camaraderie is great. I see you at the top. The bottom is always crowded. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. I, now I'm gonna make one more one more check. I got one more right here in the uh in the shirt. Green shirt. Hello everyone. Hi. My name is Marilee Driver. I'm the CEO of Aria's O'Shea. It's an all-natural body butter. And you show your top your head to the tip of your toes. Also, I'm the CEO of Fresh Meat Pets, which I made history. I'm the first African American to have a national pet line. Oh. Then I made history again. I'm the first black person who ever had a black pet expo. We had at the International Convention Center right here in College Park, May the 5th to the 7th, and it's an annual event now. Okay. So make sure you bring your pet, pet enthusiasts, lovers. You guys come out and check us out. Absolutely. And my booth is outside. Absolutely. All right. Monday, write this down. Monday, Monday coming, this Monday. Monday coming, the 21st. I'm having a live presentation at the Fairfield Hotel next door. We're going to be talking about knowing your rights, educating you about your rights, and how to have access to your rights. Thank you. Awesome. 7.30 p.m. Fairfield Monday. Awesome. All right. Well, I did not leave anyone out, did I? Everybody's good? Except for my wonderful team here. Yeah. Um, give it up for you. And I will tell you, this is a much better looking group than I am. Right. So, uh, you know, I, I always say, you guys, collaboration is a new form of currency, right? And so in this room, hopefully you have heard from a business that you either want to know, right? Or a business that you already know. But now the question is, how do you leverage that, right? If you tuned into the podcast last night, you got to, got to hear some of that behind the scenes stuff. But what I wanted to focus on today is what we call business finance basics. Now, at Truist, our goal is to inspire and build better lives and communities, right? I happen to believe that you cannot do that if you are not present in the community. Does that make sense? That's the reason why I show up, but that's also the reason why we show up, because we operate as one team, and our goal is to make that great big old company named Truist about as big as this conference room. So all of the resources that Truist has to offer, you can get that by sitting in front of one of these teammates. If you already bank with somebody else, that's okay. People make mistakes, <laughs> right? You can come back and bank with us. It's okay. We'll always accept you back. Come back and talk to us. Let us know how we can help you. And here's what we commit to you. Whether you bank with us or whether you don't, you will walk out of here with more information when you walk in. Fair enough? Yeah. All right, so let's get to it. So. 
Business finance basics. Just for the folks who didn't know, the flyers that went out had a workbook attached to it. If you would like to get that workbook after the class, please let me know. I'll make sure that I give you the opportunity to scan the QR code. You can download it. It actually is a living, breathing document. So the next time you show up to talk about small business credit, guess what? Bring that same one back with you. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right. So my name is Charles Moon. I am a financial wellness leader. I cover about 28 branches in five counties. I have Henry, Clayton, Rockdale, DeKalb, Newton County, all of those counties, and I am one man. I'm bad man, though. I, I, I tell you, boy, I, I'm miles all over the place. But uh, ultimately, my job is to be the community arm of truth. So I show up at pretty much any event. If you've got a church event, if you've got a social organization event, if you got the Moose Club, the Lodge, the Frat event, guess what? I'm an alpha, but I will show up at your capital event. I will show up at your Q event because guess what? Collaboration is a new form of Perfect. absolutely. And if I can collaborate with one of those guys in order to get something that's going to better me, better them, then it's not an even swap, ain't no swindle. Fair enough? All right. So now let's talk about what our purpose is. So truest, I will tell you just got it right, right? You heard me say inspire and build better lives and communities. But we have some very good values. And those values align with who I am. One of those values is trustworthy, right? Because I like to do business with people that I trust. And if you don't believe that that's important, trust me, you will not be in the next business session because you'll be out of business. Trust matters, right? We talk about caring. We care about our communities. We show up in droves, don't we? Being present in purpose is important, right? And then we talk about one team. It ain't just me. I brought a whole crew with me. And they represent the entire bank. So guess what? We always will show up as one team. And then we talk about success. The better, the more our clients win, the more what? We win. And that's important. We've got to be in it with you. Let's go do it, not you go do it. Right? And then we talk about happiness. Now, I've never seen a company before that had happiness as a core value. Right? I've, I've seen some people do it, but you know what they say. Often imitated, never duplicated. I mean, it's, 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 it's the law of averages, right? People go out there and try to replicate this every day, but that's truest in a nutshell. We're here on purpose. And so when we talk about supporting our small businesses, we talk about being able to scale our service, right? You're sitting in front of a team, and that team has access to everything that the bank has to offer. We partner and, and, and make commitments to our communities, and also we have expert uh, expertise and resources available to you. And remember, those resources are available to you whether you bank with us or whether you don't. So I see a couple of young children in the room. Parents, if you have an opportunity, go to the truest, I'm sorry, go to the Play Store, your Apple Play Store or your uh, Google Play Store. Download Truest Long Game. How about you get your kids paid to play a game? Learn about finance. That's what Truest Long Game is all about. We're going to provide that information to you. Now, I happen to know Zoe, who was out, I was on this podcast, and I believe it is called Polka.Rabbit, right? Polka.Rabbit.com. Awesome podcast. You should check it out, especially the last night's version. It's awesome. Um, but the thing to know is that you also have access to what we call money and mindset. It's a live podcast that shows you how to do what? How to budget your money, how to repair your credit, how to buy your first house, how to prepare for retirement. And guess what? Whether you bank with us or whether you don't bank with us, you still have access to it, right? That's how we inspire and build better lives and communities. So we've got three objectives today, right? We're going to talk about how to improve your cash flow. We're going to continue to show you how you can continue to grow and build your business. And then also, how do you protect your business? Make sense? All right. So first off, these are some questions that you may want to ask yourself. How long have I been in business? What are my annual sales? Where do I see my business five years from now? And do I know what I do I know or know what I don't know? In order to get there, right? They say people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, that too, but also lack of vision, right? Because if you can't see where you're going, you're stepping out on faith, and that's an okay thing when you're standing in church. Not necessarily a good thing to do when you are what? In business. Does that make sense? In business, you've got to have a roadmap. I've never seen anybody build a house without a blueprint. And if they did, they built that house three times over. So our goal is to give you some foundational stuff. I realize we've got businesses here that have been in business forever. You guys have been doing business for a long time, and you're experts at what you do. But guess what? 
There's something that every business should always do, and that's called continuing education. So we're going to try to help you guys out with that. So fundamentals of growth. You should not be doing business out of a personal account. Hands down. Get yourself a business bank account, right? It's effective ways you can receive payments, effective ways you can make payments, right? Cash flow management tools. You can access the credit and also insurance coverage. These are all things you need in order to effectively run your business the right way, okay? So what are some common challenges for business owners? Go ahead, shout it out. This participatory, y'all good? What do you need? Money. Money, right? Absolutely, you need to know you need to know where to access the capital is. So when we start talking about how do we manage our cash flow, I got a question for you. All the money that you make in your business, where does it come from? Sales. Comes from sales? How long have you been in business? Who ever said sales? Seven years. Seven years. You've been in business seven years. Guess what? Every year around April, we all run to get free what? April 15th. It's the tax deadline because all the money that you make in your business does not always come from the people that you sell your products to. Does that make sense? Yep. Right? Some of it comes from Uncle Sam. And so when you talk about structuring your business, like Ben's assist over here who can set up your LLC, right? When you talk about setting up your business, you want to make sure it's just set up the right way. Because if you're not set up the right way, a cash flow conversation is null and void. Does that make sense? So when we talk about business banking, right, it helps you manage your business. It helps you understand your ebbs and your flows of your business. It gives you a professional rep uh, representation. I don't know how many times I've gone to a vendor, I've gone to a food truck, I've gone to some place, and they say, yes, you can pay me the cash out, send it to my Gmail account. <laughs> well, there's a problem with that, right? I don't trust the encryption of your Gmail. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Nor should you. So when we talk about cash, but we talk about that, when you are a business owner, are you complying with IRS regulations? Right? Because nobody wants those three what letters at your door. Right? The most feared letters in the English language. IRS. Right? And DEA, by the way. You know what that is? All right. So uh, what it also does is it helps you manage your personal finance. Now, here's something that I know about small business. Small business owners tend to work very hard at building their business and they forget about what? They're personal, right? Your business operates like a balance sheet. And if you put, put all your focus just on the business and forget about the personal, what happens to your person? It's neglected. It puts your, it puts your business at risk. We'll talk about that in just a moment, right? And so what we want to do is make sure that we have the ability to what manage our personal finance separate because that's the money that you're paying your bills with. You're growing your retirement funds there. You're supporting your household with your personal funds. So make sure you're separating those business and personal finances. So a um, couple of things that, well, ways that help you separate your business and your personal finances. First of all, EIN number. If you're doing business under social, stop. Just being honest with you, if you're doing your business under a social stop, now I will go on record and say there's plenty of people in here taking pictures, all that type of stuff. I do not provide tax advice, right? But what I can tell you is that having an EIN number then separates your business from your personal so your business stands on its own to a certain degree anyway, right? So you open yourself a business uh, checking account. You also have a business debit card. That money is what? Your money. You're using your money in order to run your business. So that, that means you gotta put money where? Into the account, right? You gotta put it in, and here's the reason why most people start out a business, they say, you know what? Three years from now, four years from now, I'm gonna be a multi-million dollar business. Well, guess what? You are never gonna get a loan, even if you have a million dollars, if you do not show what? Revenue. You have to be able to show that this is what my business has produced, because lending is an actuary process meaning that they're going to look at the numbers first and then say the person is good to lend to. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not, but it's true. All right. And so also you can pay yourself from your business account, right? There's some benefits to that. You can move money from your personal account, I mean, from your business account into your personal account. I realize people you say, oh, you know what? I'm going to put my money into my bank account. I'm going to write myself a check. I make, make sure I put something in the middle of mine. The way that money moves now has changed. Transfers are okay, but here's what I will tell you. Just make sure you're keeping track of how you're paying yourself, 
right? Because again, the most three feared letters in the English language are what? Yes. Absolutely. Oh. Right. <laughs> so when you open up your business account, there's a couple of things that we've got to do. We got to validate who you are. U.S. Patriot Act says who's sitting in front of us. That means you're going to have to have valid ID. That means you're going to have to have a date of birth, a physical address. We need that information from you. And then we need to do what? Validate your business. Did the Secretary of State say that you can use this business name? Right? And on top of that, have we taken the time to get that EIN number so that way that business is not under the Social Security number? Right? Those are the things we need in order to open up a business deposit account. Now, the difference between the debit card and the credit card. Now, we already established, right, when you have a debit card, that is whose money? My money. That's your money, right? But when you have a business credit card, and all these people over here will help you get that in place, right? You can use it for everyday purchase and leave your cash where? In your account. What does that do for you? It helps you manage your cash flow, right? Because if you've ever been a business owner and had too much month at the end of the money, it's not a good situation to be in. Does that make sense? So what you have the ability to do, and I will tell you true is that right, shameless plug, Right? What they said was, we're not going to require that you actually be in business for two years, three years, four years, five years before you can apply for business credit. If you apply, if you went and got your EIN number, your LLC, you are now a separate entity. You can walk into Truist the very next day and say, guess what? I want to apply for a small business credit card. Chase will not do that. Chase will say, I need two years of financials. Full dot. Right? And I'm sorry, I know we're on a podcast. I don't like to shame anybody in the industry. I'm all about positive energy. I like Chase. They're all right with me. They just are trying to duplicate, right? It's okay to be a copycat as long as you're a copy in the right <laughs> cat. Absolutely. <laughs> so the thing to know is that you want to make sure that you get yourself set up because your business credit card will allow you to make everyday purchases. It helps control your cash flow. And what it starts to do is help you establish credit for your business, right? Remember, Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all of these other banks out there are saying you got to be what? Have two years, three years, four years in before we lend to you, right? And so the whole idea behind that is that you start establishing your business credit from day one because you incorporated last week, walked into a truest, and now you have a business credit card. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. So now, what is cash flow? Go ahead, somebody help me out. Y'all can see that, unless you need your glasses. What does that say? Money in, money out, right? So cash flow equals income sources in. Money from selling your good or providing your services minus the expenses that you have going out, which is office supplies, tools and equipment, equipment, employee wages, right? Paying your vendors. All of those things are minuses, and that's how you define cash flow. Is cash flow revenue? No. no, it is not. No. Think about how many businesses are just cash cows. They cycle a lot of money, but none of it stays. Right? Revenue is money that you retain from the business. Right? Not money that you cycle through the business. And so you've got to make sure that you've got positive cash flow. So this is just an example of some things that actually might help you manage your cash flow. When you have your business account, you have the ability to separate that business account. Use it for different purposes, like my primary account a payroll account, savings or cash reserve, and then other, right? When you think about structuring your business account, you know, you say, you know what, I got my business account set up, I got one account, and I'm doing everything from that one account. I'm paying myself, I'm paying vendors, I'm buying things, I got my debit card linked to it. I'm doing all of these different things with that one business account. Well, when things get muddy, how do I then adjust it? How do I then go to my CPA and say, this is what I spent on this, this is what I spent on that? How? Anybody? Any good ideas? No? Well, you can't. The reason why we always encourage people to open up for multiple business accounts is because it allows you to structure your business so you have accounts for separate purposes. Okay? So, collecting money, right? I told you the way that money uh, has moved has changed, right? Nobody should be writing checks, all right? So, public service announcement, right? Hey, Michelle. Michelle. Michelle writes me a check. I am a vendor, right? Michelle, no, I'm a, I'm a lawn service, right? I walk up to Michelle's house, I cut her yard. Melissa, uh, she gives me a check. I go to my bank and I try to deposit that check. Lo and behold, out of no malice intent, she grabbed the wrong checkbook. But I put that check into my business account, right? 
What happens to that check, you guys? Oh. It bounces, right? And does the bank charge me a fee? Yeah. The bank charges me a fee, right? Now I am on the hook for the amount of the service, the check fee, and now I am also at a reputational risk because I just put a bad check into my business account. Does that make sense? Now, meanwhile, can I go back and uncut her grace? I'm losing three times over, right? So if you are accepting checks, I cannot tell you how to run your business. I can only give you advice. Shift away from that. Money moves in real time now. Set up yourself to sell. Set up cash app. Set up something that's going to your business account so you're getting paid in real time, right? I would hate for you to be out there trying to throw all that dead grass back on her yard. All right. So, and then you talk about making payments. Of course, it says checks, but I just talked about that. Debit cards, credit cards, transfers, ACH, and wires, and also payroll. Now, again, shameless plug, Truist, if you have employees, has what they call online payroll. Online payroll is scalable. You saw that on one of the first slides, right? It is scalable. What that means is that you can have up to 100 employees, right? You can pay them on the cycle that you like either weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever the case may be, you do it all from your truest online banking and it is $50 a month. Does not make a difference how many employees you have. Think about that for a minute because how much money do you pay to ADP, right? You pay per person that you pay and when you pay them. Well, the good part about it is that when you have that online payroll, you do not have to worry about any of that. And as an added bonus, at the end of the year, we'll send out your 1099s, your W-2s to your employees directly. And if you ever need anything from an IRS audit perspective, we can provide that for you all through your online banking. 50 bucks a month. That's not a bad deal, is it? Right? So um, that is where we are in terms of helping you manage your cash flow. Right? So cash flow statements. Well, first of all, a cash flow statement will help you recognize operational trends. It is safe to say that if I am a lawn care business, my business is much more busy in April and May than it is in November and December. True or true? Absolutely. So when you have a business bank account and you're monitoring those cash flows, there are going to be operational flows in your business. Everybody has a slow cycle, right? So what we want to do is when you're managing those cash flows, are you thinking about that plan for how you manage when it comes slow? How does that landscape in business think about what do I do in November and December, right? Ever had your lawn care person ask you, did you want to put up Christmas lights? I'm telling you, that's the shift because some money is better than no money, right? Otherwise, my equipment sitting in my, in my, in my, in my uh, garage and it's costing me money. That equipment's not moving, it's costing me money, which is why everybody should have some type of plan for what you do when what? When the cycle starts to dwindle down. Make sense? All right, so this is an example of a cash flow statement. It has things on here like cash receipts, and then money that you're paying out, advertising, contracting labor, employee benefits, uh, business insurance, which we'll talk about here shortly. And this is just tells you about some of the cash flow things that are going out, things like your travel, your taxes and licenses, your vehicles, your rent, your pension. And here's what I would tell you. There's a lot of items up here, right? This looks like a, uh, uh, this looks like what? An accounting book, doesn't it? Anybody in here do accounting? Any CPAs in the room? No? Guess what? Stop doing your taxes. They pay people to keep up with what? Tax code. As a small business owner, again, I go back on record. I do not provide tax advice, but what I will tell you is if somebody else gets paid to do just that, I am going to pay them to do that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Best tip I ever got, stop doing your taxes. Right? You get to write it off. <laughs> I didn't say that. He said it. Okay? All right. So when we talk about optimizing cash flow, we talk about how do we reduce uh, operational costs, right? How do we streamline account payable? How do we outsource time thing? That's what I'm talking about when you talk about paying that CPA. It takes you time to do what? And if it doesn't take you any time to do your uh, to do your taxes on April 14th, right? Then guess what? It will cost you time when the IRS is sitting across the desk for you saying, "I need this." So either way, save yourself the time to pay somebody else to do it. Outsource things like that, right? Evaluate pricing for potential increases. Now, I'm going to use a real life example. How many people here got car insurance? Everybody. If you're driving, they open up out here riding dirty. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I let my East Point come out. I'm from Southwest. So I, I, I'm sorry about that. But the thing to note is that every six months, what do you do? 
Insurance premium comes due. Guess what? Take it out. You never ask them to lower the rate. But guess what? In that six months that you had that car insurance, do you think that things have changed in the industry? A lot has. A lot has, right? So now why are you not going back trying to increase your cash flow, keep that money in your pocket by renegotiating your rate? Right? People do that on the same thing on the business side. They forget about the fact that they're paying that premium. It's on auto draft, right? And they don't even think twice about it. But that's a great way to what? Put cash back into your business. So when you think about putting cash back into your business, the first thing to do is think about what are my biggest expenses, right? Where are areas that I can cut costs? Maybe it's the fact that I'm actually, maybe I'm paying too much to get my taxes done. Now I will tell you, switching CPAs is a very costly process because your CPA knows what all the bodies are there, right? I don't even have that. I, I, I have not seen my CPA since 2016, but she knows all of my kids' socials. She knows they've been birth. She, she, all she asks me is, are there any updates, right? And she knows what everything is on my taxes. So I appreciate her. She's awesome. Um, and, and again, I ain't doing my own taxes, right? I'm good. I got a degree in economics and in finance. I ain't doing my own taxes. So I'm going to pay somebody else to do it. All right. So now I venture to say there are some people in here that have gone past that startup phase, right? You understand what cash flow looks like and you're looking to figure out how do you expand your business? So when you think about expanding your business, you have to think about capability, right? It's okay to ask one person at a time to send you something via Zelle or via cash app, but when you think about merchant services, right, that's your ability to take cash, take plastic, however people feel. Because they say cash is king, right? But plastic is the queen. Mm. And there's always a good woman behind that man, okay? <laughs> so here's what I understand. If somebody's willing to pay me, I want to be able to accept their payment, however it is that they give me, accept checks, mm -hmm. right? I want to be able to accept that payment, and merchant services allows you to do that, but it also gives you some additional benefits. It allows you to accept payments, but it also allows you what? Process payments. I can pay people through my merchant services. I also get customer analytics. How important would it be to know who ordered soap a couple months ago, right? Or who was coming up for that next checkup, right? Or who it was that you may have billed three months ago, but now, guess what? That person hasn't come back. That's very important. Client analytics is very important. And also you get transaction protection, right? So those are some things that come along with merchant services. And if you need more additional information, please stop over here and see the people in the corner. They'll get you taken care of, right? So first of all, does your business currently accept payments, right? Which methods of payments are easy and quick for our clients? And then also what type of business do you have? All those things make a difference when you're talking about purchasing uh, merchant services, right? Reason why is because it is risk rate. Right? It is risk rated. Yes, we can almost get anybody approved, but there are some industries that we will stay away from. Right? There are some industries that most banks will not touch only because they then inherit the reputational risk. So if you're in one of those specialty industries, talk to your banker, talk to one of our bankers, run it by them, right? Because the only bad question is the one that does not get asked. So why does a business need to borrow? Why does a business need to borrow? To grow. To grow, right? Working capital. Working capital. I, I get y'all the cheat sheet. <laughs> y'all can see that, right? It's pretty short, right? So we talk about maybe they're consolidating debt from, from, other, from another business, right? You can consolidate debt under your business, right? You also have the ability to prepare for those seasonal highs and seasonal lows, right? Maybe you need to hire additional staff. I think I was having a conversation with her. She said, well, what happens if this is a two-man show and they now get a new government contract? They've got to be able to do what? Scale very quickly. And acquiring talent costs what? Money. So your opportunities for growth grow when you know why you need to borrow. Right? So we've got several different borrowing solutions. All right, so there are a couple of different ways that you can borrow, right? You have your small business loan. When you think loan, think about start date, end date. Think about your car note, right? That's a loan. It's just a small business loan. So it has a term, a set end date in mind, schedule payments every 30 days. That's what your loan is. Your small business auto loan, same thing as your car loan, except what? The business is now what? The owner of that vehicle, okay? 
Then you have your small business commercial vehicle and equipment loan. That's a little bit different because this depends on the tons of your truck, right? Maybe it's a box truck. Maybe it's a large truck. Maybe it's a, uh, a huge mower or a piece of farm equipment. Truist, we're very, very proactive when it comes to business lending. We will do lending on your livestock, right? Yeah, we will. You can put your cattle up. And if you default, guess what? World's biggest barbecue. Right? That's how it's going back. So the thing to know is that we're not in the business of being able to do that. So what we try to do is help you out in any way we can. And we say use the right collateral for the right type of loan. So what that means is sometimes that means that it's real estate. You may have a building that you're paying, you know, 2016 rates for, but the terms have what? Changed. And you're looking for ways to cut cash flow. So when you start talking about refinancing a piece of uh, 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 real estate, small business might be a way to go. Maybe you're leasing a space and you want to buy a space. Maybe you just need storage space, but you don't want to put it under your personal. You want to put it under your business. That's small business real estate loan. And then the last one is a small business line of credit. All right. So small business line of credit. What's the difference between the line of credit and a loan? Anybody? Speak up. Difference between a small business line of credit and a small business loan. A line of credit. Go ahead. Go ahead, speak it up. A line of credit that is hard uh, learning, hard to use interest in some students, where the loan starts on the first Bam, there it is. If you got a loan, that payment's due in 30 days, right? If you have a line of credit, it is a revolving line of credit. Use it, pay it down, use it, pay it down, until you are what? Done using it. Very, very beneficial to have because it helps you deal with what? Expansion. Helps you deal with what? Seasonal highs and seasonal lows. Helps improve cash flow. Maybe I want to what? I can use a small business line of credit to buy another business. Yeah. Maybe I'm entering in a partnership and I've got to put cash up front, right? Maybe I want to collaborate, but in order to get access to this person's network, we've got to do something together, right? Because collaboration is a new form of service. Absolutely. And I'm telling y'all, y'all going to learn something. When you walk out of here, that's the one thing you're going to remember. All right, so uh, what to know when you get a business loan? Well, the type of financing it is. Credit cards are a great way to do it. Remember, Truist does not make you wait two, three, four years before you apply for business credit. You can start your business credit today with a small business credit card and get paid while you're using the card because we actually offer rewards, right? So the thing to know is that you want to know more about that. Talk with the bankers over here in the corner. Um, and then, of course, uh, small business loans are un uh, are unsecured, meaning that they are supported by your credit worthiness. So I mentioned this last night on the podcast, but what I want to want you guys to understand is that when you are applying for business credit, not necessarily just the business credit card, they are lending to two people. They're lending to your business, and then they're lending to you. Why? Because people walk away from businesses every day, right? You can't walk away from yourself and business credit should not be used to run away from personal discrepancies. Does that make sense? Yeah. So refinancing everything in your business name does not mean that now you have perfect personal credit. It doesn't work that way. So we use those together. We use those in conjunction. We say this is the business, but now we say what? The person who I'm shaking hands with, the person I say is doing a great job, guess what? We can now approve this loan based off of our personal guarantor. Does that make sense? The business can't sign on behalf of itself. So just know your, your credit does matter when it comes to uh, setting up your small business loan. All right, so there's a knowledge check on here, but this fund is really small and I don't like tests on Saturday. So um, we're gonna skip past that. Now, let's talk about protecting the business. All right, so uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, I, I'm, I'm using you again. Stand up. Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us what your business is. You try to pick, sneak a piece of candy. I got you. No chewing gum. No I'm kidding. Go ahead. Stand up. You offer a product, right? What's your product? What's your product? What product? Yes. Services. Yep. What services you offer? Mental health. Mental health. So I went to her business. She did a phenomenal job. And guess what? I decided. I was gonna go out the front door and tell everybody about it, but I moved too fast. I slipped in her place of business. Is her business liable? Yep. 
right? Because if you turn on your radio, what do you hear every fourth question, right? 411 Payne, John Ford, you hear all that, the strong arm, you hear all of those things because we are now in a Sue Sue society. Here's what I will tell you. If you don't have business insurance, you better get it now. Because people's natural inclination to say is if anything happens in conjunction with the business that I'm doing business with, that business is at fault. I don't believe that that's fair. But at the same time, that's the environment that we in. And so what I will tell you is when you start talking about protecting your business, you should have business insurance. All right, so I do got one knowledge check question. There is a company that is the fifth largest broker of business insurance. Do you happen to know who that is? Who? Speak up. Come on, speak up. Farmers? Y'all y'all, y'all think of insurance providers. Who, who was it? McGriff. And guess what McGriff is? A truest company. How about that? In the presence of excellence, because a lot of people don't think about the going to the bank and saying, hey, let's talk about insurance. We are the fifth largest insurance broker in the nation for, sm- uh, for small business insurance. That is huge. That means that even if you're in transportation and you have a you have a DOT number, guess what? We can insure your vehicle. We can insure you with general liability, workers' comp, employee benefits, all through Truist. And nobody thought that, that was possible when you were sitting in front of that bank or opening up that checking account, did you? So when I tell you that we try to do it the right way, inspire and build better lives in communities, again, you've got to be present in order to know these things. So I'm happy that all of you guys are in the room, but just know. You need to make sure you protect the business that you're working hard to build every single day. And business insurance will allow you to do that. So business insurance helps protect against unforeseen events, right? It has even minor and large mishaps. That protects you, right? And then at a minimum, every business owner should have liability insurance at a minimum. So if you don't have it before you leave, get a call, give some good information. Because here's the deal, regardless of whether you decide that you want to go with us or you don't, guess what? You need to have the conversation, right? Because people perish for lack of knowledge. knowledge. Right. And if at least that way we allow you to go out into the marketplace and be a confident buyer, because now I know what it's going to cost. I know what's reasonable for my business. And so now when I go out and I walk into that other insurance agency, right? in good hands, right? Or like a neighbor, right? When I walk into that office, I already got a baseline. I know what it's gonna cost me. So when they quote me high, I can say, hold on a second. My bank told me otherwise. Does that make sense? All right, so you wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to do that. And so when you start talking about it, potential risk, fire, cyber crime. Seems like every five years there's something that happens with that place that keeps my credit bureau. Every five years, like clockwork, right? And that's unfortunate because the smarter we get, the smarter the criminals get. So if you don't have insurance, what's at risk? Everybody that you have done business with, not just you. So why not protect yourself? All right, theft. If somebody steals my stuff, I want to be able to be able to replace it, right? I can't do business. Somebody stole my lawnmower. Now, Melissa, I, I, I don't get to keep my truck. I mean, I got, I got to keep, I got to keep cutting my grass for no reason, right? And then property damage, disability, missed wages. How about that? Missed wages. They'll pay you for missing what work that you created. It's your business. So why not have insurance? Now, commercial property insurance. You want to make sure that you have the ability what to protect your property. General liability insurance, and then here's a big one: life and disability insurance. All right. So when you think about insurance, here's what I want you guys to think about. Don. Don. How do you spell Don? D-I-M-E. First letter, D. Right? That is your debt. When you have insurance, life insurance, you are protecting yourself, your family, from your debt. Right? Second letter. I. Income. Because if you're gone, guess what? So is your income. I venture to say that you guys are homeowners. There's still a mortgage out there. 
So when you have insurance, your insurance protects your what? Mortgage. Because that house, right, we don't want to own it. And then E, finally, right, the expenses. Because burying people is not as easy as going to Home Depot and picking up the show, right? <laughs> there are expenses that come along with it, and not just on the day of your burial. They keep coming. Your family will then be rattled. So when you think about insurance, those are the things that you're thinking about. D-I-M-E, dime, debt that you currently have, income that will be missing the moment that you expire, the mortgage that your family lives in, and the expenses that you leave them with. That's the reason why you have insurance, even if you're a business owner. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now, workers' compensation. If you've got employees, you should have it. Commercial auto insurance, business interruption insurance. What is that? Anybody want to take a guess at what that is? Anybody? No? Nobody knows how it works? Okay, so um, 2018, wasn't it? What happened on I-85? Bridge crash, burned to the ground, right? In Atlanta traffic, all six lanes shut down. Crazy. Now, here's what's funny about it. How quickly did they rebuild that bridge? Very quickly. Very quickly, right? And that bridge is stronger than it's ever been. But I got a question for you. What happened to the mom and pop sandwich shop that was right off the exit? What happened to the business, the hotel that was right off of that exit? What happened to the convenience store that was there that couldn't open their doors because nobody could get to them? That is business interruption insurance. They were protected. Right? How many people would have loved to have that type of insurance the minute that COVID hit? Because PPP didn't get stood up until when? Months later, right? Yeah. We were well into the pandemic by then. So business interruption insurance could have helped some small business owners. So again, knowledge check, but I don't do Saturday school. So um, there are a couple of next steps, right? What are three items that can help you achieve your business goal? Well, we just talked about it. First of all, stop doing your own taxes, right? Because all the money you make in your business does not come from the people you charge and the services you provide. Some of it comes from Uncle Sam. Get somebody who's a trained professional to do those taxes for you. Save yourself the time. Because even if you don't spend the money, you're going to end up what? Giving that money away if you do it wrong. Right? That's something that you want to get right on the first try. Right? You also want to do what? Start thinking about how do I legitimize my business? Right? Do I have an EIN number? Am I structured at a minimum as an LLC? I'm not doing business as anymore. I've graduated from that. Right? So when you talk about legitimizing your hustle, that is separating your business from you as an individual, and that is very, very, very important. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you are protecting what you're building every day. Right? You want to make sure you have an opportunity to sit down, talk with these bankers, and here's the deal. As long as you have a conversation with us, you are walking away more educated than when you walked in. Guess what? There is no obligation. Nobody has to open up anything with us if you do not want to. But I think we laid out a pretty clear case as to why we might be what? The right cat. Because it's okay to cop. All right? So, in conclusion, I will tell you guys, hopefully you guys all can now see through this new pair of glasses. Am I right or am I right? Was that information helpful? Yes. So here's what our next steps look like. First of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you to Ms. Melissa Lewis for setting this up. When you talk about inspiring and building better lives in communities, that means that you have to be present. We are present in our purpose. And here's what I will tell you. If somebody should have been in this room but wasn't in this room, guess what I want you to do? Get them my information. Because this won't be the last time that we do this. And I would love an opportunity for them to be able to hear it because guess what? Collaboration is a new form of what? Absolutely. So here's what my challenge is in conclusion. Get with somebody else in this room and find out what they do. You may not need their services today, but if you know what they do and you've got somebody to pull on, guess what? If you're already ready, you ain't got to get ready. That's what collaboration is all about. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so very much. I'm available for questions. I got a whole team available for questions. Thank you, Ms. Melissa, again, and Ricky Services. Thank you, Rabbit, uh, Polka Dot Rabbit uh, Podcast, for being able to do this. And if you have any additional questions, we are going to make ourselves available to you guys to answer any questions that you have. Fair enough?
Oh, we got a giveaway. Yes. So basically, we have a couple of business offers. Oh, see, now I'm, I'm, I'm going on record right now, right? <laughs> Fans in the sky. I didn't want to do a test, but she the host. She the lady in charge. So she doing the test. How right. quick? All right. And she says there's a giveaway involved. All right. So y'all, y'all keep me honest. I gotta know who raised the hand. Don't just yell out your answer. Okay. How many prizes we got? Just one. One, one, for, um, one for here and one outside. Yeah. One for here, one for outside, one for my pocket, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all thought this was free. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm okay. no here, here's what I'll tell you. She got one outside, one inside, and I actually do have one in my pocket. So I'm going to ask third question. How about that? All right. So here we go. One knowledge check. We can win for a free, uh, for, for a free gift from uh, Key, Rekey Services. We got a bad gift. We got a free gift. Oh, she doing three gifts. So I get to keep mine, right? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I also want to make sure that when we talk about vendors here, she does credit repair. Absolutely. So she is the one that you're going to be doing credit repair. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, let's see. Y'all get a question. <laughs> All right, so in 2018, something happened on I-85, right? And these companies that were in that area had something that prevented them from what? Losing of all of their business. What was it? Business insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said situation. <laughs> <laughs> said situation. <laughs> what was it? Business insurance. <laughs> What type of business insurance? Interruption. Business interruption insurance. So she had a hand up first. Go ahead and So we got our first one over here. Okay. No, hold on. You say you didn't say. No, she didn't say. Who said business interruption insurance? No, hold on. I didn't know. All right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. All right, we're going we're to leave it up to the host. Who who you want to give this to? I'm like, who said it first? I got my hand on Anthony. I heard it. I heard it. He said, all right, right here, right here in the banner. Banner in the back. All right, so we got one right here. All right, so we got one prize given out. So he is ineligible from getting another prize. Can't win more than one. Okay? We got that many prize for everybody. All right, so... Let's see. If I went through Truist to set up my business payroll, how much do I pay per month? Oh, right here first. Right here first. Fifty bucks. You gotta say right here. She got it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That man of white. That man of black. There we go. All right. Um, here's the first one. Right there. All right. We got one more? Yeah. All right. So, um, oh, who can give me, raise your hand, who can give me three types of our loan options for our small business? Come on. Mm. All y'all say I want to learn about credit. Oh, we got a hand right here. Commercial estate, same thing. Say twice. Oh, okay. And a commercial vehicle. There you go. All right, here we go. Third one. All right. So now here's the hard one because this one's coming out of my pocket. Okay? This is coming out of my pocket. So, um, let's see here. When I first got started, I told you I covered five counties. What are three of those counties? Right here. Oh. All right, so she's, she's quick. All right. All right, so stand up. You got to tell it to everybody. Which county do I cover? Henry. Henry? Clayton. Clayton. DeKalb. DeKalb. Rockdale. 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 No. Oh. I know. I was going to see how far she's going to go. So, um, I, I told you this is coming out.
out of my pocket. So you get a twenty-five dollar gift card to Bonefish Grill, Outback, Carabas, or so. So, first of all, I want to say again, thank you guys so much. Do not walk away from this room without getting with my team. They want to be able to help. And here's the other part I told you we focus a lot on our businesses. And what I will tell you is our businesses are the lifeblood of our community. And I appreciate every, if I have not used you, I still appreciate you. We suffer sometimes from a situation where we think that there's not enough business. There is more than enough business for our community. And so when you talk about celebrating businesses, first of all, I want to say, Happy Black Business Month to each of you. And if you did not know that it was Black Business Month, find Black Business, celebrate them, take a picture, and send it to me. I would love to get that picture. So that way I can see you celebrating that Black restaurant, that barbershop, that nail salon. You know, I want to be able to see that. Feel free to send it to me, and I will make sure that I post it on all of our social media. Um, but I say thank you so much for attending today. I really do appreciate it. Again, thank you to our host. Thank you to our podcast. Thank you to the venue for being able to host us. But thank you guys so much. Y'all have a wonderful afternoon. Make sure you come up and get your questions asked. Hey, hey. Give it up for you. Oh. Okay, Melissa, everybody, this guy did an incredible good job. Agreed. But everybody in this room, this month of August is something they call. Anybody can tell me what month is it? Will month. Anybody?